Okay, uh, hello everybody. Welcome to uh, the second episode of Britball with the Breens. Um, this week again, we'll go through the usual. We'll go through some of the results that have happened in the past week. And then we'll go on to review uh, the games coming up this week. See what we think is going on. So, uh, as is normal, we will start in the Premiership. Um, going through our results from last week. Uh, Manchester Titans versus Sheffield was a bit of a shock. Um, in ter- Not in terms of result, but in terms of scoreline. Yeah, I think seeing Manchester only win 6-0 is not something we've probably seen for probably a long time, to be fair. They normally put up a, a heck of a lot of points and win games by a long way. So, you know, whether it's just a slow day at the office for the offence or whether that's just the Sheffield Giants' defence really stepping up big time remains to be seen I guess we'll find out later. or some of them at the Manchester City last game of the season celebrations possibly Maybe. but you never know um, so that's something that uh, was an interesting game so tight Merseyside Nighthawks versus Wolves was very close in the first half um, but as we thought last week Merseyside Night just had a bit more in that second half to really hammer hammer home Um I believe there was a few wee plays that maybe went one way or the other, um, but it seems like the Merseyside Knights Hawks took the second half. Yeah, I mean, as we say, it was very close in the first half of the game. I mean, these things tend to happen on road trips, especially sort of significant size ones as well. Um, but, you know, it, it seemed like it was a really competitive game. I believe when it was a two score game, there was actually a touchdown for Edinburgh called back for a taunting penalty. And you know when games as close and competitive as these ones, just how important these kind of decisions can be. Yeah, so that'll be interesting uh, going through the season because they al- they've always had tight games uh, ahead of my emergency side. They always have a good a good matchup. In the Prem South, um, Ken XL's won. Now, I know I put Bristol Aztecs to win in the score prediction, but I put the Exiles to win in the game prediction because I wasn't quite sure... Uh, after seeing the XLs put up points, um, but Bristol Aztecs put up zero. I mean, when you consider the amount of points that the XLs gave up to the Olympians in the second half alone, I think seeing you know a, a zero on the score sheet is a big surprise. Uh, you know, we we've seen early with the game against the Blitz that the Aztecs defense is obviously good. Um, looking at the scores, but. Yeah, nine nil. Fair play to Kent. It's a great result for them against what is a good Aztecs team. So, you know that's that's a great result. And again, that's the Aztecs at home, and they do have a good defense. Um, we as I said, we know the Kent XLs will put up points. Uh, watching them a few games last season, they were very very strong. Um, obviously they had the little sideline debacle, but obviously it didn't help very much. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, we can only go with the rumours we've heard on social media that uh, the cameraman was feeding back to the Bristol Aztec sideline, and I think yeah, it's not it's not great, and it becomes even quite embarrassing when you then don't put up any points as a result, so hopefully that gets resolved and doesn't happen again in the future. Yes, yeah, and, it, and the interesting thing here is we're saying about them putting up points against the Olympians, and the Olympians putting up a lot of points in the second half, but... They were very close to knocking off the Blitz. Yeah, I mean, again, in our other game in the South, 21-14, it's a great kind of scoreline. It's also a good competitive game. Um, and maybe, you know, this is the year where somebody else challenges us for that second top spot in, in the South. I mean, we kind of covered last week that the Warriors, they just seem to be that class above at the moment, and I don't see anything to suggest that changing. But... You know, maybe there's a more of a battle for that second playoff spot, which could be close come the end of the season. Yeah, definitely. Uh, NFC One North went the way we thought it would. Uh, good wins for East Kilbride in Glasgow. Um, NFC One South, and we, after saying about the, we were a bit surprised about Chester not really getting going. They went and knocked off Lancashire. <laughs> Yeah, and um, it's a great result. I mean, well done to Chester. It's so important to get off the off the board and when you're promoted, and you know that's a good Lancashire Wolverines team that have beaten as well. So you know they're they're going to take a lot of confidence from that. It's a good win. They won late on as well, so you know it's 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 a great result. And 
although it went against my picks I'm glad to see the one yeah it went against my picks as well but as something I said last week is Lancashire are very hot and cold and obviously they were away from home um, but they held a good lead um, so great effort by, by Chester and the other game in there uh, Sandwell absolutely demolished Doncaster which was no surprise um, SFC won Central Sussex Thunder versus Hertfordshire Cheetahs now what a win for the Cheetahs it's a great win for the Cheetahs. I mean, we've seen they've started the season so strong as well, and they've, you know, they've they have taken straight into Division One without any fear whatsoever. And um, again, going against my pick this week, uh, I discussed last week how I like to side with Sussex. I think they're a very good team. But again, a twenty-eight twenty-one game. It's the kind of game you want to see. It's a very close game right up to the end, and obviously seeing Hertfordshire get the victory is great as well. <laughs> Um, big shout out to their coach yeah, we'll get it right um, but the other thing about that game is I just watched the clip of the massive touchdown run that Lang- uh, Hertfordshire scored to to win that game and oh my word tackling like come on Sussex um, the sec- other game in that division was one that we split uh, Berkshire Renegades and Oxford Saints now you had the Oxford Saints to win which you called right Um Berkshire struggling to put up points this season, it seems. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I sided with the Saints because I recognised sort of the tough start to the season they'd had. Um, you know, they, they'd played, I believe it was Sussex and Solent, which, you know, judging by last year's results, is the last two teams you want to start up against in that division. But, you know, I, I kind of fancied them to, to get off to winning ways, and they, they finally did that. Um Berkshire, I'm not really sure what to make with with them at the moment. Um, I think it's going to be a tough old season, and you know that they've lost to I believe Portsmouth already as well. So you know it, it's uh, struggling to see where they might find that win this season. But hopefully they can keep going, keep competitive games like it was, and nick a couple of wins along the way. And I think this division, SFC one said, was a belter. Hertfordshire, Sussex. Solent and Portsmouth and Portsmouth ran Hertfordshire close so that is some division to watch this season um, FFC won East uh, the Kimshire Cats came through in the end uh, 18-10 victors over Bury London Hornets put up a burger against Colchester with a cracker of a field goal have you seen that video? I have, I have. it's had a nice field goal a decent distance some good leg on there as well yeah uh, and then the Wembley Stallions uh, outdid the Ouse Valley Eagles, um, who obviously had to have their struggles. But again, who's the six percent that picked Ouse Valley to win? I mean, you know, uh, uh, they're coming off the week where they had to forfeit a game due to low players. I think we've all seen over the years Wembley are a good team, especially the last latest couple of seasons. I don't know. Um, maybe they're just hoping to be the odd ones out on this occasion. Yeah. Uh, a few a few weird percentages again this week um, looking into the NFC2 North um, Inverclyde Goliaths again a good showing by them out against uh, a tough Clyde Valley Blackhawks team um, NFC2 Central now this is an interesting one because after how well not only did last week how bad are Morecambe Bay there's, there's a hundred point over a hundred point swing between Notley winning and the score they gave up to Halton. Yeah, I mean, if you're involved with, you know, with Morecambe Bay or you're following them, you have to be a little bit concerned. But before going down that road, you know, it's obviously a quality win for Halton. They live streamed it in the fantastic stadium they've got, and they look very, very good. A very strong team. They were, they're probably one of the favourites to to go all the way to the NFC. Playoffs might go through final. a stadium. Yeah, well, there's that situation as well. I'm sure Halton will be desperate to get that home field advantage. But can you see anyone knocking them off? I can. I no, can. Not I mean, division. they're, you know, it's hard to see where the competition is going to come from, and you know, does that affect them later on in the playoffs when games get tighter? I don't know. All, all, they, all I know is that at the moment Halton look really good. Yeah, they've got a very strong win, and you know that they're going to keep going on forward. Yeah, as did the Bulls. Uh, they shut out the Humber Warhawks. They look another strong contender for uh, kind of going all the way in that uh, division this year. SFTC, SFC2 West, Southwell Warriors hammered the Bl- Worcester Black Knights. 
um, putting up a burger to zero. Then in the SFC2 South, the London Blitz destroyed Hastings, which is no surprise. Um, again, I'm not quite sure what 6% of people are voting for Hastings against the London Blitz, but 82 nil is a, a hammering. Yeah, I don't think we learned anything from that game. No. I think we already knew the Blitz B were a good team, and I think we already knew that Hastings weren't. Yeah. And I don't think that's changed any opinions on anyone. I don't think anyone should get overly excited about the scoreline either. No. And then, last but not least, the SFC2 East. East Essex Sabres uh, lost out to the Essex Spartans 21 nil. So... That rounds up the results. Now, next week's, or this weekend's, um, games. We've got a few interesting ones. Uh, start off with Edinburgh and Tamworth. Can only really see this going one way um, over the last few weeks. Um, we weren't sure what Tamworth team were going to show up, but th- after a few fixtures, we can see that they're strong again. Um, so I can't see them losing. Yeah, I tend to agree with you on that one. I think Edinburgh at home are a very strong team as well, but I still think Tamworth get the job done. Yeah, agreed. Uh, Merseyside versus Manchester, though, is a very interesting one. It, it, are we going to get the Manchester from their first game, or are we going to get Manchester from last week, and the Nighthawks are at home? Well, it's always the debate, isn't it, which which Manchester team are, are going to be the ones we see. I think if the Manchester team that we expect to turn up turns up, I'll, I can see them winning this game. You yeah. know, not necessarily comfortably. I think uh, Merseyside are also a very good team. I think they'll give them a game. I think if uh, Manchester are at their best, I think they, they get the win there. Yeah, I would agree. I've put Manchester as well. So, Prem South, uh, Kent Excels versus London Blitz. Now, although Kent had a really good win last week um, I think they will put up points against the Blitz but I don't think they're going to have enough to overturn the Blitz at this point I mean if you'd asked at the start of the season I'd be saying I didn't really see this as a game you know uh, I'd expect the Blitz to win comfortably but having seen the early season results and Ken getting the win last week I think this will be close I think you know the Blitz maybe aren't putting up the same amount of points as we'd expect defensively they still look strong as did Kent in this case. I still see the Blitz winning, but I think this is going to be a lot closer than we would have called at the start of the season. Oh, most definitely. Uh, I think it will be a, a much closer game with thing. Farnham Knights uh, versus the London Olympians, though. I think the Olympians are going to run away with this one. Uh, said they run the Blitz close last week, and they did really well in the second half against uh, Kent Exiles. The London Warriors versus the Bristol Aztecs has to be a worry now. Um, obviously, the Bristol are away from home, which doesn't help, but... Uh, the defence is is good, but not against the Warriors. No, um, the only the only real threat to the Warriors between now and the playoffs is complacency, and I don't see that coming. They've been so consistent over the last how many years, constantly in and around the Brit Bowl, winning it five times in a row. I believe you know, I, the, the this I think the Bristol team should be worried. Yeah, I think it should be this week. Uh, NFC One North, okay, as it's our division. We'll just say we reckon the Northumberland Vikings they're probably going to overrun the the Gateshead Senators. Um, they are a strong team. We've played them. Um, and the same with the Glasgow Tigers East Kilbride Pirates game. However, I think that's going to be a close matchup. Yeah, I mean we can't really avoid discussing that when it's the Glasgow Derby. If I'm not mistaken, I believe their grounds are four miles apart or something like that. Um, two teams that are off to a strong start um, obviously Glasgow got beat by Northumberland away but that's a tough away journey as well East Kilbride are undefeated at the moment um, both with very very physical defences both very reliant on the run game and both have quarterbacks who found the end zone on multiple occasions this season um, you know I think it'll be a great game I think if you're down that way it'll be a great occasion to go down and watch yeah I think East Kilbride will shade it but I think it's going to be a very tough one um, very physical affair then the NFC won South Lancashire Wolverines versus Doncaster Mustangs great chance for Lancashire to bounce back after last week yeah I mean I can only see Lancashire winning this game I mean we, we all seen on social media they've made a change at the offensive coordinator position um, but you know, I think it's a great opportunity for them to bounce back and I fancy them to do so. Yeah, I think they'll put up a fair few points there. And then the Chester Romans versus Shropshire Revolution. Now, they've had their matchups in the past and they've always been pretty good. Uh, the year Shropshire won the Division 2 title, um, they had the better of Chester and they went on with a solid defence and they've proven themselves really sturdy in Division 1. So I think they're going to pull this one off again against Chester, even though they're away from home. 
Yeah, I mean, Chester are going to be buoyed. They're, they're going to be uh, really excited given that they got their, their first win last week. I think they'll be going into this matchup full of confidence. But I think Shropshire will have the edge in this one. Um, I still don't feel anyone in that division is going to be near the Steelers. But I yeah. think Shropshire are that next team down. So I, would, I would probably agree. SFC won Central. Portsmouth Dreadnoughts at home versus Sussex Thunder. Now, Sussex obviously suffered a loss um, to Hertfordshire. Portsmouth ran Hertfordshire close. I, I can see this one being very close as well. I, I think Sussex will edge this one. But um, I can see this one being very close away from home for them. Yeah, I, I'm going to side with Sussex here. Um, you know, I sided with them last week and they, they lost the game there in a close one. As you've said about Portsmouth and Hertfordshire already being close. Uh, you know, I, I can see it being a tight game, but I still fancy the Sussex Thunder again. Yeah, done. I'd agree. So SFC won East, the Cambridgeshire Cats versus Wembley Stallions. Now, this could be a close game. Um, the Cats have been really strong this season. Wembley started to start with and then they've started uh, started getting their game together. I still think the Cats are going to be too strong uh, at home. Yeah, uh, I tend to agree with you there. I think the Cats will get this done. Um, I've backed Wembley in, I believe, all their games this year so far. This is the first time I've went against the Stallions. Um, I just don't see a way past the Cats just mm. now. No, I think they're going to be too good. However, this one's a, a cracker. London Hornets versus Bury Saints. Now, London... I've already got the better of well Wembley, and as I said, they gave Exiles a run for their money last season. But they've obviously came down. Uh, they lost very narrowly to the Cats last week, so I think it's just going to be a belter. But I think because the Hornets are at home, I think they're going to take this one. Um, that one will be an interesting one to see. Uh, NFC Two North, the Inverclyde Goliaths versus Dallas and Steam. Now this is an interesting one. Two rookie outfits that have both shown positives. Uh, in their first few games uh, Inverclyde Goliaths seem to have a little bit more uh, ability to keep the games close um, however I think this one will be a close one I think the Goliaths will maybe edge it yeah I think home field advantage is going to play a big part in this one um, uh, both teams as you say have, have managed to put off points Most, uh, both teams have managed to keep scores fairly low as well which in your first year in the league is vital keeping those scores low and actually getting your points on the board Inverclyde obviously right. off a big win um, you know uh, I think this will be tight I can see it being a one score game but I, I think the Inverclyde Goliaths will get it done ok so NFC 2 Central Halt and Spartans versus Leeds reckon the Halt and Spartans run this one depending on what Leeds team we get we don't know what they're like um, a couple of seasons back they looked really strong went to the playoffs got hammered by Glasgow um, and they really struggled last year. Uh, not in the Raiders versus Furness. I've got a feeling I might have picked this one wrong. Um, I think that the Not in the Raiders being at home, they may be too strong for Furness, seeing how they struggled with um, Morecambe Bay. However, we never know. I believe this is one we, you know, we possibly went with, I went with Furness on this one. Um, I still think they're going to have enough to get past Nottingley, but I don't think it's going to be a particularly open game. No. NFC 2 South, Crew Railroaders versus Staffordshire Surge. Could be an interesting one. Staffordshire struggling to put up points, but I still think they're going to have too much on, on defence and uh, heavies up front for Crew. Um, Humber Warhawks versus Birmingham Bulls. Yeah, a week removed from Humber Warhawks versus Birmingham Bulls. We get to see the matchup again. and. I'm sure this will be one that Humber are desperate to get out of the way. Yeah, I would agree. SFC2 West, Bristol Apache versus South Wales Warriors. Bristol Apache always annoy me. They're always up and down, up and down. Um, and South Wales have been so good that I can't see South Wales losing this one. Yeah, I tend to agree with you on that one. I've got South Wales and I fancy them to get this done. SFC2 South, Swindon Storm versus Hastings Conquerors. Now, we've not seen Swindon yet. However, we've just seen Hastings take a pasting. Hasting, take a pasting. Didn't mean that. Um, so I reckon that Swindon will obviously have the edge here. We, we don't know any, much about them, to be honest with you. They haven't played yet this season, but uh, we've seen what teams can do to Hastings over the past. Uh, at the end of the day, I don't think this will be a contest. Regardless of what we don't know about Swindon, we know enough about the Hastings Conquerors. Yeah. Then the London Blitz versus Bournemouth. This could be a belter. Um, Bournemouth have been decent over the last few seasons. 
ah, this season coming in, uh, looked like they're looked like they'd done a be- decent bit of recruiting. So hopefully they put up a really uh, tough matchup against London. But London Blitz being at home, just coming off a big win, I think they'll be enough to pull through. Yeah, I think there'll be a lot of points in this game actually. Um, yeah. It wouldn't surprise me to see a lot of points, but I think the Blitz will get it done. Yeah, I'd agree. Bour- Bournemouth might put up some points against Blitz B this week. And last but not least, the SFC two East. Could the Maidstone Pumas get a win this week against the East Kent Mavericks? No. Oh, okay. Um, I see nothing to suggest anything different. And, you know, East Kent have come down, appreciate that, but, you know, I think they'll, I think they'll have enough, more than enough to get past Maidstone. Yeah, it'll be interesting. That East, East Kent have struggled this season, um, but I, I, I think they will have enough um, to, to beat Maidstone coming through. Uh, last notes. Um, we had a section where we're going to call Dummy of the Week. Okay, now, this week, we've last week we had none. Nobody in Britball did anything that we could have pointed to Dummy of the Week. But this week, we've got two. First of all, Lancashire Wolverines, I mean, fair enough. Offensive coordinator gets let go for not scoring enough points, whatever. But don't post it on social media, because you're going to get ripped for it. Um, and secondly, Carlisle, uh, it's a shame that they've, uh, they've folded but I mean this has been coming for years and to then turn around and say oh because we're not real refs some of us players didn't take the field if you've got 16 players you can't afford for none of your players to take the field well, let's also not forget that not only has as you said this been coming for years but on the flip side of that as well is that you know you should always have enough players to replace a couple of guys stepping out and they didn't forfeit the game where they didn't have refs. They've yeah. elected to forfeit the game and the season after they didn't have referees. Yeah. I'm not buying it, and uh, I don't think I'm the only one. No. Dumfries is nice and close. That's all I'm saying. It's just a shame for the teams. Knock yourself across the, across the border. It's just a shame for the teams that are now only getting a six-game season. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's the people I feel so I guess the I guess the advantage of that is that any associate teams looking for games... There's some teams now that want some games, so uh, that could be a positive. Uh, anyway, that's it. Uh, that's been a second week of Britball with the Breens. Uh, we hope you're enjoying it. Uh, thank you very much to uh, Gridiron Hub for our lovely new microphone. Um, not quite figured out how to use it properly yet, but we will get around to it, and hopefully we can get the audio and video quality up every week. Thank you very much for listening. See you later.